welcome to another episode of Chick Chat Live. My name is Cornelia. And on the episode today, we are talking about beauty standards on the first segment. And our hot topic of the day is knowing when to read the signs and leave the relationship. Joining me in the studio today are three very wonderful ladies. One of them is Belinda Beidou, international model and retail entrepreneur. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. I also have beauty entrepreneur, Nanaya Berko. But yes. Did I get that right? Yes. I I need to do better with my my, my pronunciation. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And last but certainly not the least, Aisha Med Sabarak, fashion model and fashion entrepreneur. I like the hyphenates. There's always a dash. I like that women are doing dash, dash these days. (laughs) So we have a new tradition on the show. Before I throw out the first question, I need you guys to pick a number between 2 and 12. And you can say it out loud. Go ahead, Belinda. 8, 7, I should you want to roll the dice? Okay. I'll go for it. <laughs> seven? Wow. Oh, was that you? <laughs> Who said seven? You. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> well, you get to go first. So speaking of beauty standards, I know we've had a couple of conversations off camera about right. beauty standards and how um, how it's evolving over, over time. So I guess my first question would be what... What do you think the current standard of beauty is as it relates to Africa? Do you think there's, there's currently a standard or do you think we still have the Eurocentric pointy nose, pointy lips, especially when you look at like magazine covers and stuff? No, I don't think so. I feel mm-hmm. beauty has now evolved from face to mm-hmm. body. Okay. So now everybody's embracing the whole African look where mm-hmm. we have the peachy. The curves. Oh, the curves uh-huh. and the boobs and mm-hmm. you know the full figure yeah mm-hmm. yeah full figure like yeah. you know the hourglass shape mm-hmm. so that's just the not the trend now i find mm-hmm. like everybody wants to have a peachy bomb mm-hmm. and the nice the, Kardashian. Body. Oh, yes, the kardashians yes. have made the thing pop. well we already mm-hmm. had it before they women. Made it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, yes 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 that's what i feel so you think it's shifted away from the facial feet because i remember like let me just say maybe the 90s it was, it was like more like the it was nose more like the nose the lips, the lips i feel you know. so because i feel people are doing more boob jobs and bum jobs mm-hmm. well like brazilian butt, butt yeah. lifts yeah. as opposed to like going to get a nose fixed or their lips mm-hmm. well, people are still doing botox though <laughs> like, you know things are affordable right now so <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> so yeah i think that's just what it is yeah, yeah. Uh, belinda what, what what do you think the standard is now um or what's changed what changed, to be honest, um, if I can speak for myself and the women that mm-hmm. I know around me, um, I've always been a natural beauty and I've mm-hmm. always had natural beautiful women around me, whether mm-hmm. they're skinny tall or full African beautiful women mm-hmm. or what. And I can speak, same, I can speak for the women around me. We didn't come from pointy nose and all mm-hmm. that, you know. We have our thick lips and high mm-hmm. cheekbones, okay. which <laughs> those people envy. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what I'm used to and I appreciate that. And even to today, all my friends around me are still mm-hmm. like that. In terms of what is going on now, I don't want to mention the name Kim Kardashian. Mm-hmm. Reason being is because African women mm-hmm. have always had, had that. Figure. Have, have that had that. Before that's it became us. popular. Before yeah. it became mm-hmm. that, you mm-hmm. know, and it's something that black uh, mm-hmm. men like. So mm-hmm. now I feel like, the Western women either mm-hmm. have to go to the gym or have to pay money to get um, the body. The body. Mm-hmm. And, and also, with that being said, now you have more African women that are also doing that mm-hmm. because, mm-hmm. you know, they also want to, you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. Months. I think for me, people are shooting for perfection. I think it's gotten a bit too much. much you know yeah. what I mean? My thing is, whether it's plastic surgery or whatever, if mm-hmm. you need it, get it done. Mm-hmm. I would not advise anybody at the age of 20, 30, whatever to do is 60s, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, unless if you have a problem that mm-hmm. needs to be fixed, then it's a different story. So what about the people that want it? Do you think that's an insecurity? Uh-huh. For an African woman, we are so blessed. I remember mm-hmm. when the first time if I, I got to New York, I was about 17 years old, and makeup artists would take pictures of my lips mm-hmm. to go inject the same mm-hmm. size of my lips. For other people. You yeah. know what I mean? The, is what we have is what they are paying for oh. now. Mm-hmm. Because we don't appreciate what we have. Mm-hmm. And now it's all over the magazine. Yeah. Since when, you know, a white woman have a bad up till there. Mm-hmm. Have you seen this woman walking mm-hmm. around Mokola? For me, I when, when it comes to beauty, I'm not looking at the woman that, you know, uh, maybe on Instagram that mm-hmm. they've paid. Look around when you mm-hmm. are doing your normal groceries and you mm-hmm. see this beautiful 
young black woman with tight ass and, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. tight body. Mm -hmm. That's the natural beauty. Mm -hmm. What they are born with it. Sometimes yeah. I look at someone, oh my God. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sometimes I look my at someone, boyfriend like, will not even look, look at me. Yeah. Uh -huh. You see, mm -hmm. so it's something we are born with it, but I yeah. feel like we have to learn to appreciate it more. more. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and feel comfortable in our own skin. And, and yeah. yeah, but I don't necessarily agree with you. Though. That's fine. In, with I, with, with um, having, if you have it, you have it naturally. If I ha if I don't have it mm -hmm. and I can afford it, mm -hmm. get it done. honey, I'm going to buy it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it's so, my money so, so, and my so body. So who are you buying it for? Who are you <laughs> buying, buying it for? for myself. Yeah, that's, because that's, that's, my, that's my thing with when we start to, we're, we're moving into cosmetic. I was going to come to that. Right. But we're, we're already in the conversation now. When you inject your bum, if you don't have hips, you know, and, and you feel like maybe you want to be a bit more fuller or you're going from an A cup to a B cup or whatever, mm. who are you really doing it for? Are you, do you want, do you want to hold your, do you want to, do you want to hold your, are you the one touching your breast? I've never understood. I touch my breast. This, this the, is a conversation we've been going yeah. to move from mm -hmm. this whole plastic surgery into yeah. just being comfortable in your skin, skin yes. and looking nice for you. Yeah. Um, I am over, I'm makes over you... people mm -hmm. thinking that you need to look good for someone. Mm -hmm. so. Why can I not just wake up one morning, dress up and look in the mirror and tell, listen, you are damn gorgeous and okay. I am happy. Why should it be for my husband or for my boyfriend? Why do you want to look good for somebody? But that's but something you should yeah, do so, every so, day. Yeah, so maybe I should start with what your, really... what your experience with beauty standards are. Go ahead. Experience when, when it was a challenge. Mm -hmm. no. Where I came from, I had a whole body of women, mm -hmm. and I was always criticized. Mm -hmm. like, you look too skinny, you look on the right. Mm -hmm. And I had this low self esteem mm -hmm. until some years ago mm -hmm. when I met my husband mm -hmm. and I relocated to Europe. Mm -hmm. I went, I went there, there and I saw it was a whole different, different like mm -hmm. system. Yeah. People see you and they worship you like a goddess. Mm -hmm. Up until now, um, wherever I go, they've been like, Wow, mm -hmm. she's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I I used to have problems even hanging out with my friends because whenever I'm with them, I felt there was something missing, mm -hmm. and I had this insecurity mm -hmm. wherever I go. Like, so where you where were you before Ghana? Yes. Okay. Yes. I go out with them and everybody, oh, she has like big butt, she has big boobs, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like so flat, like everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And I'm skinny. So it, it was it was like a big challenge for me. Mm -hmm. Whenever I go out, I I I I don't feel confident. Mm -hmm. But after I had those experiences from Europe, coming back, I feel like, yes, I'm a goddess, yeah, you know? And, and do you think that was... I don't think Europe would be start singling you out for your body. I think it would be more your the physical face. No, your face. The yeah. face and yeah. the body too. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when I go on sets and I'm shooting, they go like, look at your butt. I'm like, look, why are you going <laughs> to my country? My yes, butt is even yes, the small. Yeah. Like, okay, so as know? a model in Europe, your butt is too big. Yes. And yes. as a... Individual in Africa, you are skinny. I'm the most skinniest person alive. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah. how did you kind of balance both emotionally? Like, what, um, what did that do? Do you want to eat more or not eat? To be frank, <laughs> yeah. At some point, I adapted the skinny mm -hmm. look because yeah. that was what was paying the check. Jill, yeah. You know, okay. and yes, yeah, girl, you better wire mm, that joy. Oh, yes. <laughs> See, and I didn't yeah. have to please anybody. Body. I had to mm -hmm. love myself for me. Mm -hmm. And at some point. I gave up. I was mm -hmm. like, no, I think I need to save some money and do some boob jobs and mm -hmm. do some. But I thought about it. I was like, no, why would I even spend money? Mm -hmm. I, I actually went. Mm -hmm. And the doctor asked me, have you had any kids yet? I said, mm -hmm. no. And she's like, look, I can take your money and do it for you. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to advise you mm -hmm. as a woman, mm -hmm. don't do it. Mm -hmm. Even if you have your kids and after you still want to do it, think about it like so well mm -hmm. before you do it. Yeah. It's not because I want your money, but I'm telling you the truth. Oh. It's not advisable. <laughs> well, Nana, yeah, you seem to have a different opinion yeah. about what you yes, want to do. So yes. go ahead and go ahead and yes. you know. It's not advisable. Let us know it's the reason why you, know. you feel like it is doing it for you. Because I'm on the fence with whether or not I I I don't have a problem with people doing what they want to do to their body. You, you're a woman. You can do whatever. You I'm actually going to do it after my I finish all having all my kids. Well, okay, then that's fine. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, what does it? What does a good job or what does a bigger butt do for your self esteem? It's, it's what I'm saying. Like, do you think that really helps what the issue is? I don't think it's... A, for me, it's not a self-esteem issue. It's okay. just something I want to look that way. Okay. Just because okay. I... Just, just because. because. Yeah. Um, anybody that's known me, I am a naturally confident person regardless mm -hmm. of my size. Mm -hmm. I've gone through sizes. I've gone through small, through big, mm -hmm. through 
I've I've been I've, I've won, been many sizes. Yeah, 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 I've been many sizes at mm-hmm. every point in my life. So and confidence for me has never been an issue. Like mm-hmm. I will go where I have to go, say mm-hmm. what I have to say, yeah. regardless of how I look. I can mm-hmm. look like I came out right, drugged from look untidy, messy. And if I have to put my point across, mm-hmm. I'm still going to do it anyway. Yeah. So for me, it's not a confidence booster. It's just something that I would feel more comfortable in. Because mm-hmm. <clears throat> If when I was before I had kids, I probably had a really nice perky boobs. And now this little this, <laughs> this girl, this thing. She's changed. <laughs> your to change voice every voice. Thing. Yeah, thing. Yeah. I mean, if I can afford it and just make bring it back up again and be able to wear a t-shirt with no brow, I'll definitely like that. Mm. Why not? Why right. not? Like, you know, like I said earlier, if if it make you happy mm-hmm. and if you mm. if it's you know, some people some are lucky to born natural beauty mm-hmm. that I'm almost 40 years old. I have two kids. I okay, girl, age, you better you know slay. Yeah. And, um, you know, some may need it. So I'm not going to, I may mm-hmm. do something maybe when I'm 60 or 65 or 70 or what. But right now in my life at the age of 40, mm-hmm. January, you're not, you're not I will that. not do that. Mm-hmm. And I always say that black women, we are so blessed. Mm-hmm. Natural beauty now. It's not the, you know, the natural beauty I grew up with. What are we trying to, like I said before, if you need it and it make you happy, Mm -hmm. get it done. Mm -hmm. But make sure you do it right. Mm -hmm. But there's also other ways that we can still stay our natural beauty and still look pretty. You know what I I mean? I think it becomes a problem when, you know, Nanaya, it's it's great to be confident and do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But just to maybe pull out what I'm hearing Belinda say is, when we're passing these messages on of I can get my butt bigger, I can get my boot bigger, I can get my nose filled, I can get my lips filled. There are a lot of people that are looking at you. You might go to a good doctor but they and get it done. It. But the people that can't afford it and are looking to you as, oh, Nanaya has done it. So I'm going to go do it the back door way. Yeah. There are repercussions from not doing things safely. So why I asked if when it comes to this cosmetic surgery thing, when you do it, do you need to take a picture of it and post it on Instagram? We have been watched to think when you flaunt it, mm-hmm. it's when it's beautiful. Because mm-hmm. the younger generation coming, even when they don't have the money to afford what they have, mm-hmm. they try as much as to put themselves out there mm-hmm. just so they can be, no, oh, I've done this, I've done that. Mm-hmm. But they don't really see how it affects them mm-hmm. in the future. future. Nice. Yeah, yeah. You know, they think, oh, Kim Kardashian has done it. She's rich, mm-hmm. you know. She can afford everything. Yeah, but mm-hmm. to you, what do you do? Mm-hmm. You are, maybe you are a student. Maybe you are yeah. somebody's, you under somebody taking care of you. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what is going on here. If you exactly. know a yeah. lot of people that have done plastic surgery mm-hmm. for many, many years. I live in LA. Mm-hmm. I live between New York and LA for 20 yeah. years. You know, I know people that have done it. If you sit with somebody who is 60, 70 years old now, mm-hmm. what advice you don't do it? Mm-hmm. You see? Just doing it doesn't mean... It's done. You have to keep going and mm-hmm. going. I've oh, lived yes, with girls yeah. yes, that the fine, breast, right. one is getting smaller, smaller. leaking. Yeah. You see, so so the side effects. What, mm-hmm. For me to say yes to come to this show, mm-hmm. what message am I passing on? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I wouldn't want to come and sit here mm-hmm. and lie to the, whoever that have taken that 30 minutes sitting on TV mm-hmm. to listen to what we are talking about. Mm-hmm. Like I said before, if you need it, some people might need it. Some mm-hmm. may be born, you know, a little. Mm-hmm. Get it done. Yeah. Let's move to natural hair. And I the had beauty natural hair my natural whole hair. life. I still have natural yeah. hair. The, and by the, natural hair, I mean shaved. Unre- unrelaxed, just what's growing out of you. I don't mean relaxed, natural. I mean kinky. For me, I have been like this for five years now. Mm-hmm. And at some point, I wanted to grow my hair. Mm-hmm. But whenever I am booked, mm-hmm. the clients prefer this look. Okay. So I tried to grow it for a period of time and I have to cut it. Mm-hmm. So I've decided, okay, since I want to change my face, I have wigs. Yeah. Not just them. because I want to look different, Let's but work. because of the options, weather. Yeah. It's cold. Yeah. You can't keep this look for just to yes. keep myself warm. warm. But to be frank, I'm confident in this look. look yeah. And I can wear it as long as I, mm-hmm. I'm going to leave. Yeah. Well, what, what, do you, what do you make of women who say, oh, my hair is too hard? Because I hear a lot of when it comes to natural, and I'm like, sometimes we haven't even gone through the process of finding out what your texture is. First of all, just grow it out. And and you don't have to. I don't wear my natural hair all the time. But I do find that some women just don't like the look. No, and I'm hard. like, what is what is what is wrong with the look okay. of having your so natural hair? I, I, I went natural for about three to five years. Okay. Um, it was a love hate relationship mm-hmm. with my natural, natural hair, hair. Um, because my hair is my hair is extremely coarse. Mm-hmm. 
So for me, two things I noticed mm -hmm. with my natural hair. I felt that it was, it, it had more to do with managing it. It was mm -hmm. more time consuming. Mm -hmm. It was actually expensive. Mm -hmm. And then I also realized that after it, after even on a very good day where you feel like you've you kind of look unkempt. Yeah. It was giving me that vibe of See, that, you looking... See, that, 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 that word I find oh, no. almost... Offensive. offensive. I, I'm not offended. I'm not, I'm not overly... You see, I wear weaves. I do I'm everything. Offensive. So I'm not really not offended by it. Yeah. But I find that the word shouldn't be unkempt for our natural hair. No, we should embrace it. I, and I think that's where we've for been somewhat... For five years. And mm -hmm. then I, I also found out that I'm always like on the go. Yeah. No, and I understand I the feeling. Braid in saying, the night and tie... It was it's too, too much, much work. Too much. And for me, I'm a ponytail girl. Yeah. So I relaxed it. When I'm in a hurry, I just tie a bun mm -hmm. and I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was convenient. Mm -hmm. That it was more convenient to keep a permed hair yeah. as opposed to keeping my mm -hmm. natural hair. Yeah. And that was the only reason. It wasn't really yeah. about You didn't the think look. too much about it. No, yeah. no, no. It was more convenient yeah. to yeah. me because I could mm -hmm. always just tie my hair and, yeah. bang, and then I'm out of the door. Because some people still have their natural hairs and they just slap on wigs. Like yeah. they, they'll just, it's Con just easier. Back. Yeah, Conroe yeah. or, or, but I, I find that there's a problem with the word unkempt I, or, or you look reality. rough, you look scattered, you look, you no, look. but that's the reality. But that's the, that's what I, goes I, out of our head. I think we're a little brainwashed, mm. if I can say that. Mm -hmm. Some of us are, whether mm -hmm. we like it or not, some of us are. Mm -hmm. um, I love my short hair, mm -hmm. you know, I, I kept my short hair for a very long time. I still have short hair. Um, my whole career, my hair has to be short. I don't have a choice mm -hmm. whether I like it or not. For 15, 20 years, my hair was short. Why did so you not recent, have a choice? I'm, I'll get there. Mm -hmm. So recent, because it's a job, mm -hmm. I cannot just get up today and say, I'm going to put on a wig because it makes me look like a baby doll. Mm -hmm. one, one must be comfortable in his or her look. Mm -hmm. Two, it's work. Mm -hmm. For me, modeling was not fun. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm not just doing it to, to, to be cool, whatever, which they do these days. You know, it mm -hmm. was work. It was business. That's what I do for a living. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And when I moved to Ghana, for the first time they put relaxer in my hair, if I tell you the amount of money I got paid to be done, you won't believe it. Mm -hmm. That's when I started relaxing my hair. Then I came to Ghana. I'm in Ghana running my own business. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I've built my career in a way that I can do what I want to mm -hmm. do at this point. In general, yeah. as a natural, my daughter mm -hmm. is eight year old with a mm -hmm. huge afro hair. I would yeah. never put relaxer in mm -hmm. her hair until yeah. she wants to. Yeah. Well, I agree with so, that. Is it easy to maintain? Yes or no? But mm -hmm. I think once we mm -hmm. find an easy way mm -hmm. to, to, to maintain our natural hair and embrace it and pass yeah. it on to our children, it's easy. Yeah, from a very young age, I noticed that, yeah, I was darker skinned because my sisters are lighter skinned than me. My aunties, some of my aunties were light skinned and a lot of my friends were light skinned, some even mixed race. So I always knew I was like darker skinned than everyone else. But it didn't really bother me as a child. As a teenager, not so much. So it was probably about my late teens, early 20s, that was when I started to have issues with my complexion. Like I felt insecure, like everyone was much lighter. I'm going out with my friends and we're all doing makeup. Like I couldn't share, like girls, we share makeup sometimes, foundation, powder, whatever. I, I was never anyone's color. So like, you know, I always had an issue with that. And then it got to the point where I actually started bleaching my skin. I mean, I did that for like six months, maybe one year, and then I got tired of it, and then I stopped and just accepted my color. The older I got, the more I began to appreciate my color. I saw the benefits of being darker skinned, like, you know, when you break out spots, marks don't show as much, you know, you could, my skin, I noticed I could hide scars on my face, on my body, whatever. And, you know, with time and age, I just loved it. And, you know, even now, sometimes I try and even get darker. I don't run away from the sun or anything like that. I've accepted it and I love it now. I definitely think we have to redefine beauty standards because, um, I don't know, maybe because of social media now, it's becoming like a crazy thing. Everybody's trying to be fit farm or try to add weight or try, and apparently there are some apps now that you use and, it transforms you to like a totally different human being. I just think, um, in all fairness, I know they say this every time, but I feel like beauty is really from within. You know, if you don't feel beautiful inside, regardless of whatever apps you're using or how much you're trying to lose weight, or how much makeup you use, it, it doesn't change anything. 
And as, I think you have to be comfortable. There's no... Yes, sometimes, obviously, um, weight size can be affected by health and stuff. But aside from that, if you're comfortable in your skin, I think there's no need to um, overdo this whole trying to lose weight or trying to be like the perfect size 8 or like the size 0. Everybody sees me like, oh my God, I'm trying to be like you. And I'm like, I, why are you trying to... I'm, well, I've always been this size. I still wear the same jeans I worn seven years ago. I mean, some days I'm this really confident girl who's like, I don't really care. I don't care. Today I don't care. But some days I care. Some days I, I want to have that perfect Instagram shape. <laughs> I want that shape. And those days I'm just like, if you can just cut here and just cut there, it'll, it'll be perfect. Yes, I, I do feel that sometimes. Um, the thing is, I'm really careful because I don't want to. I don't want to be that one who's like superior and be like, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Ew. I mean, if if that's what you want to do, if you feel comfortable with it, you can go ahead and do it. But why are you doing this? You need to think about it properly. Like, why am I doing this? Um, because it's not going to solve the problem. Whatever the problem is, I don't. It's not going to solve it. You need to actually ask yourself. So there was a time when I just thought all my life problems were because. I was plus size. Like I thought, okay, if I'm skinny, I would have zero problems in life. I would be the perfect human being. But that that's false. That's not true. <laughs> so um, if if that's why some people want to do that, then they need to realize that having a bigger body is not going to change your problem. It might add to your life. It might add more problems to your life. So um, yeah, I think more than more than wanting to do it, you should think about what what is the reason. I mean, I think that's very important. Moving on to complexion. What is our issue with complexion in Africa? And what do you think that the, 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 the people who are marketing these products see? Because the business of bleaching and toning is, 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 is more than so, booming. It's exploded. So, yeah, so um, what is it about company? skin and fairer skin that we're... Aisha, can you speak to that? It's about the men. Okay. For... Four or five years ago, uh -huh. when I was in uni, uh -huh. you know, girls take trip to Nigeria uh -huh. to meet men and stuff. Uh -huh. And before they come back, they have heap of creams and stuff. They right. want to bleach their skin just because the men like fairer mm -hmm. skin. Right. When you're dark, it doesn't it doesn't show beauty. Mm. And for me, I felt you are not doing it for you. Mm. Do you know the repercussions that comes with it? It's skin cancer mm -hmm. and all these things. Why are you doing something for somebody who is not even going to put a ring on your finger? Mm -hmm. Why would you even put oh, so if they put a ring on the right. finger, even it makes the bleaching okay. No. Even that, I'm not going to do it. Even that, I'm not going to do it. No matter yeah. what. Because for me, I feel if this is you, mm -hmm. let the world or whoever is in your life right. know this is who you are. Uh -huh. Don't be somebody you are not. Because mm -hmm. I see these days you go on Instagram and stuff and you see girls who are so white, they have children and they are so black. I'm like, yeah, this is you, you, you can't post a throwback picture because it's like, uh, that was not you. I mean, how are you going to explain to your kid? Like, this used to be me. Exactly. Yeah. How are you going to explain right, to them? Like, okay, so I was black and all of a sudden I became white overnight. Uh -huh. We're not real anymore. Yeah. So, no, no, I do think that's exactly. that, 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 So, how do, how do you differentiate that from with the what, cosmetic surgery? See, that, that makes yeah. it a bit funny, but yeah. I am very um, uh -huh. bleach and averse. Like, yeah. I, it's something that I will not do. do I would yeah. not advise anybody to do. Because mm -hmm. being a beautician, I have seen that... Um, the skin. Mm -hmm. The skin. It loses its luster. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it loses its bounce and texture and tightness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, over a period of time... It thins out and, your skin, yeah. Yeah, even makeup doesn't look good and right, makeup yeah. actually even falls off on bleached skin, overly bleached skin. Right, so it doesn't stay as, as Yes, long. and even, well, I come from um, a region where a mm -hmm. lot of old men would bleach their skin mm -hmm. and it's an unsightly sight yeah. to see them with the black hair and black, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I don't think it's the best, honestly. Yeah. If yeah. if you can maintain your skin tone, it's yeah. all it's better. That's <laughs> all we have time for today. We'll be back with the hot topic of the day. Stay with me. I've been married for about a year now, and to be honest, since after my wedding, I have not been happy and I want out of my relationship. I courted my now husband for 10 years, and it was a long-distance relationship. We met when we were still in high school. I was 18, he was 22. 
He finished his ordinary national diploma and never wanted to further his education for his higher national diploma. I moved on to do my national youth service and I got a job. We were always in touch and got to see each other about four to five times a year. But even then, I had doubts about the relationship because he refused to get a job or learn any additional skills. And I was too busy at work that I didn't have time to date anybody else. And I was holding on to what I already knew. He said he wanted to marry me and that after the wedding, he was going to raise the money to start up a business and that his family will support too. We went to visit their family house where he was living with his mom and his only sister. On first impressions, they were nice and supportive of the upcoming marriage. But in the end, my family were the ones that spent 80% of the money used to pay for the wedding. Two weeks to our nuptials, his family started saying that they didn't have any money for anything and they made all kinds of excuses of not wanting to spend, even when everything had been booked. I didn't want the disgrace of not providing what was needed after invitation cards had gone out. I ended up paying for much of the expenses. Now, on the day of my traditional wedding, my husband's mom took the bag of money that was given to us from my husband's friend that was with the money. She seized it and said she will use it for the menial expenses she contributed towards the wedding. She bullied my chief bridesmaid for the money bag she also had and put the fear of God in my friend. A day or two before the church ceremony, my mother-in-law didn't seem to be making any plans for a reception that was to take place at her house. She demanded this. I had to make arrangements for food to be cooked in their house. I organized the tents, the drinks, the ice, the food, the gas, the firewood and the cutlery. When I got back to their place after the church, my husband's sister, who was monitoring the cooking, had carried all the food and the drinks and put them away in takeaway packs and stored them in the pantry before we got in. She didn't offer my family food or water. Some had come all the way from out of town that early morning for church and were hungry. I didn't complain or mention anything, but I went into the room where she had packed the food and I took two packs from my mom and my brother. They hadn't even started eating it when this lady came out and started shouting telling everyone that I had disrespected her by taking the food that she put away in the pantry and given it to my family. She said I insulted her and that she will beat me and disgrace me in front of my mother and my brother. She went into her room, changed her clothes and wore shorts ready to fight me. She was hurling insults at me and disrespected my family as well. Her relatives around her were holding her back, but no, she kept on. For food that everything that was used in making it down to the firewood I bought myself, I was totally weak. This lady is married and she doesn't even live in the mom's house. How dare she tell me I have to take permission from her before I take food and give my siblings. The toughest one happened on the 1st of January. The night when my husband's mom was praying loudly to God to take me away from her family dead or alive. I was shocked to my bone marrow my husband also heard the prayers. I prayed, prayed and prayed and cried to God to rebuke these harsh prayers. The next morning, she threw me out of her house and my husband took me to an uncle's place where I stayed until he followed me back and said there was no way he could take care of me. I am still the breadwinner and have been feeding and taking care of my husband and giving him pocket money, waiting on when he will find a job. Yesterday, his auntie called me saying I should tell my siblings to raise money so we can send him abroad because he is now my husband and I have to do everything to see him prosper. My eyes are wide open and it's dawned on me that this may have been their plan. Am I being used? The tricky part of it all is I am pregnant and seriously desperate to divorce him. What do I do? Well, welcome back guys. You've heard that story and now it's time to find out what our studio guests have to say. Ooh, no, no, yeah. <laughs> what would you say to this lady? Let me let me start with maybe the first thing, which would be the signs before the marriage took place. Now you have this guy who wasn't really up to standard. Mm-hmm. Um, for lack of better words, in our casual colloquial way, we'll say she married down, right? Mm. Exactly. Right. So you you have the guy that wasn't necessarily on your level that you chose to stay with or chose to marry because you felt you didn't have any other option mm. and you held on to what you felt you already knew. Do you think that was a telltale sign from the beginning that she shouldn't have? Or do you think that wasn't where the mistake was? Where would you have drawn that line hmm. with the details of the story? Okay. So the thing is, um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with mm-hmm. marrying down. Mm-hmm. 
but I feel that um, every woman should be discerning mm -hmm. and to know that people's situations change. Mm -hmm. So I would rather, for me, speaking for myself, mm -hmm. I would marry potential. Mm -hmm. So if I'm saying I'm marrying potential, then I look at this gentleman, I feel that mm, with his behavior and how he's carrying on in 10 years, mm -hmm. he will not be where he is. Yeah. yeah. Then I would go ahead and marry regardless of mm -hmm. the societal imbalance. Yeah. yeah. However, people do not change. Mm. Nobody's going to change. And mm -hmm. certainly marriage will not change anybody. Mm -hmm. So what you see, is they want, is what you're going to yeah, get. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality on the ground. Mm -hmm. So either you're marrying potential mm -hmm. and in hopes that the person is going to be bigger, mm -hmm. or if this person has no ambition, is not in conversation, you know who's ambition, ambitious mm -hmm. from who is not. Yeah. If the person is not, you shouldn't go in, in the first place mm -hmm. because then you're going to be the man in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And it would... Tell you may say I'm independent, I'm strong, I can afford this, I can do this for myself, I don't need a man to do it. But mm -hmm. after 20 years, you would want your husband to at least pay school fees. Mm. Or after 20 years, you would like that one time take me out and pay for the bill. Yeah. You yeah. get sick of it, yeah. regardless yeah. of how yeah. independent you are. You are. Yeah. So you need to get married to potential. I have no problem mm -hmm. with starting from scratch. So, so you think from the beginning she had no business marrying this guy? She shouldn't have married him. Yeah. Okay. Because it wasn't going in to summary. change. <laughs> in summary. <laughs> in summary. Because behaviors well, yeah. don't change. I have a slightly, slightly, slightly different opinion, but let's hear yours. What, what, what well, do you say? For me, with what I read mm -hmm. from the story, mm -hmm. she was scared to be lonely. Because mm. you can't say you wouldn't go out to look for because you had no choice. You yeah. were busy with that. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. You want to get married? Mm -hmm. You 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 get You're up and go. Yeah. Exactly. You go mm -hmm. out there to look for. You knew this guy was a lazy guy. He mm -hmm. finished his O and he didn't even want to do his HND. Mm -hmm. But you went ahead to marry him. Mm -hmm. For me, I want to have kids and let them know education is important. Okay. So I won't go marry an illiterate who doesn't want to do anything for himself. Mm -hmm. Okay, girl, you better speak <laughs> up. Exactly. Even, you know, even if he's an illiterate, mm -hmm. if he understands the values of education, education. that's yeah. an exception. So he wouldn't want his children to be like him. Yeah. People that are not particularly literate, but mm -hmm. they work, but they they work and they educated their children mm -hmm. because they know how it was being mm -hmm. illiterate. Yeah. In exactly. this instance, this guy was a lazy guy. Yeah. He and his family were trying to use the girl mm -hmm. to make themselves rich, Yeah, which is very insulting. Mm -hmm. you, she saw all these red flags, but she still went ahead. And mm -hmm. to me, I blame her for whatever she's going through. Mm. She shouldn't have married the guy. Mm. Belinda, what are your thoughts? <laughs> what are my thoughts? Um, I agree with uh, both ladies. Mm -hmm. I, I also think that I think in Africa or, mm -hmm. or in Ghana, mm -hmm. or some of some women think marriage is an achievement. Mm -hmm. To me, I'm not one of yeah. those women. Yes. I, I, I think it's beautiful to have a partner, mm -hmm. you know, but at the end of the day, I want to be with somebody that I can work with, I yeah. can enjoy life, all yeah. of it. Um, would I be with a guy like that? No. And a yeah. guy like that would never even ask me out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, no, it is their confidence. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You know, yeah. it's, I think maybe I'm too old to, mm -hmm. I, I'm still being played here and there, yeah. believe it or not. You yeah. know what I mean? But I think as such, you know, if you watch the, the, the signs in that, mm -hmm. the guy was lazy. Yeah. And what really, mm -hmm. the father of my children, my husband or boyfriend, mother will come and call me to do that. No, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no. My, I don't want to say problem, but what I discovered in the story, when I, you know, when, when I read it and she wrote, she wrote it, was that this girl and everything that she's mentioned outside of this guy being lazy, which she didn't even say, he, he has she always could, been yeah. the way he is. Most of the issues with this relationship with the mother-in-law and, the, the, sister. and the sister-in-law, they seem to be family issues where you've placed yourself in a situation where you've moved in to his mother's house. To me, that would have been where I would have drawn the first comma. Mm -mm. I cannot He's move still in. A so, little so do you think that He's still yes. a little boy. So do you think that that was sensible? Would you move in with no. your mother-in-law no. from no. jump? No. Okay. Not even with so, the roommate. No. Yeah. So no. you... No. <laughs> so you would save your money and go get your place. Yeah. From Sorry, boys. Would that be the same? Or on an eye, are you flexible to you know sometimes people marry, they don't have all the money together. And that's the well, option that they have. To him no. coming to my parents' house. You're just not moving in with his No, his that, it's, it's no, you won't come to my parents' I wouldn't, house. I wouldn't. You won't at some age. Yeah. If when I'm 18, 21, yeah. 21, no. My kids I tell them after college, you're not coming yeah. home. Home, yeah. You know, I shouldn't be 35, whatever. Living no, with my mom. you're not gonna come to my yeah. parents' house. I mean, what kind of a mother raised? me yeah you know you're 40 years old and i'm 30 something years old staying yeah. at my parents house and you're gonna come do your business yeah. at my parents house and that's go so you think that's already a problem
problem. Yes. yes. From when For he me, was yeah. If you want to marry me mm-hmm. and you don't have what it takes to rent an apartment, mm-hmm. we can't buy, but we can rent. Rent, rent. Yeah. easy. Until that is settled, that we can both afford to rent a Together. small space it's, to be in, yeah. we are not getting married. Okay. Straight no, up. No, that was marriage married is big. And we lived in Marriage is a okay. long journey. You get so, it. So you guys, well, we had, we, well, before, we when I got it. married, we had the option to either go to his parents' house uh-huh. or, or parents. come to my parents' house. Uh-huh. And so, well, I'm not a very likable person. <laughs> <laughs> and to keep the peace in the house, <laughs> it ended up being your parents' house. It ended up being in my parents' house because God knows. But that's a nice guy that would be open because not every guy what would wants want it. it like they'd yeah. force it to be the other way around. <sighs> so that's that's a good guy. No, he is a good guy. Yes. And the thing is, that's a, so the thing is, you know, when it comes to relationships and marriage, I mm-hmm. know you do what works for you. Mm-hmm. And at the yeah. time we got married, that was what worked, worked for us. And we gave us enough time to save up money and, and get so, our own yeah. space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it wasn't all rosy. We had external mm-hmm. issues here and there. Mm-hmm. But we knew what the goal was. was and the yeah. goal was to save that rent money at the time, time to, to move to your own to, yes. So it's what works for you. Yes. Someone yeah. will say, hell no, I'm not mm-hmm. doing that. Yeah. That's what works for you. For yeah. me, mm-hmm. at the, I mean, it was a good two years that we lived in my parents' yeah. house. A good two to three years in my parents' house. Yeah. It wasn't rosy. I wouldn't say it was the best decision. Mm-hmm. But it definitely made a lot of financial sense for both of us. So were you see? So, so now I I think that when when you come around, you know, my, this is how I envision things. When you come around my family, it is my job to protect you from your family, my, well, from my family. And yes. if I come around your family, it's it your is your job. To, it, it, in this story, it doesn't sound to me like the guy is being protected of, of her, her within that space, especially because. So can you speak to that? Because you've literally lived that experience. And even um, well, do yes. you agree that he? clearly wasn't being supportive of Yes, her. he clearly yeah. wasn't being supportive because yeah. at the time we lived in my parents' house, there were a couple of times I had disagreements with my sister mm-hmm. because of my husband. Yeah. And I would choose my husband over my sister. Mm. Because guess what? In 20, 30 years' time, she would probably be lovey-dovey with her husband. Married with her husband. And I would need my husband too. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think this guy was man, in, uh, man enough yeah. to stand up for his wife. Mm-hmm. And that's rather unfortunate. Yeah. Because then you should be man enough to say, mother, this is not on. Yeah. It's either you you suck it up or we're mm-hmm. going out. Yeah. Well, let's go back to the shorts and the sister wanting to fight. What would be your approach to the fight? Um, to be frank, she put he- herself in that situation okay. to be fought. Mm. Really? Yeah, she did. Okay. When, when they came around and told you, pay for this, pay for this, pay mm. for that, you should have provided people that would take care of those services, not mm-hmm. to allow them. Because mm. for me, it's a red flag for them to tell you, oh, we don't have money, we have to do this. Mm-hmm. Already you have issues with your husband per se. Mm-hmm. That means his family yeah. will not be as nice as you think he is. Yeah, yeah. So if you are paying for the services, what is wrong in paying for people? If you don't have family to take care of that, mm-hmm. Put your people in that position. So she should have hired caterers and she should have kept everything separate. Exactly. Yeah. To avoid all these But would you really anticipate that though? That's what I'm saying. So See, like, we are yeah. humans. Mm. With me, I always like to think two steps ahead. ahead. Okay. I always Staying think ahead of, of the game. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I always think of the bad before mm-hmm. I think the, of the good. good. Yeah. So if this is what is happening... And I'll, you already know how they are. Exactly. I would just let caterers to take care of it. Dad, you can so. hijack it. And uh, everybody is going to have food. Somebody that has entered the room to wear yeah, shirts. Exactly. She you will hijack those caterers. No, you can't. But at least there's a barrier there's there. There's a barrier yes. there. You don't yes. know them. Mm-hmm. So even if you would disrespect them, you will put some, yeah. a little bit of dignity mm-hmm. in it. You will yeah. just go all out. Yeah. So for me, I think no. she just put herself in that situation. Mm-hmm. She could have controlled it better. Mm-hmm. She could have. could have controlled it better in the sense that, number one, you've dated this guy for X number of years. Mm-hmm. Long time. And... If you're dating somebody, you know the kind of background they're from. Mm-hmm. So from the get-go, you probably would know that you have a cancer process then. Yeah, exactly. yeah. That should be established. Mm-hmm. Because I, from the day one, I knew the kind of family I was married and into. into yeah. So nothing came as a surprise. surprise yeah. And then number two, maturity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you've been through counseling and you understand the mm-hmm. essence of extended family. Mm-hmm. Now you're getting married. You're not getting married to an individual. You're getting mm-hmm. married to a, 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 whole a whole family. And mm-hmm. that's the reality on the ground. Mm-hmm. Hate it or love it. Mm-hmm. No man is an island. If you're marrying me... Yeah, no same. man is an island, but it's as if we're even going to no, go for God and country and no, what no, the no, Bible says. I, listen, your immediate family is an island. Yeah, 
Yeah. Let's face it, it is no, father, it is not, wife, and, and children. children. Well, according to the will of God, that's before. what it is. But we're from a traditional set up. Okay, so this is so where me, tradition now starts to mess up your relationship yeah, because we take it, it too no, far. It, no, 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 it is immediate way. family. Do you know need everybody. everybody. So Muslims are white, like we are white family. Let me tell you something. But with mm -hmm. us, I, I love my thing. mother and I love my dad. Mm -hmm. I love my sisters. We're very close knit. I have mm -hmm. four other sisters. Mm -hmm. And I would love my husband to treat my people the way he treats me. Yes, I understand. And so it's a mirror thing. If, yes. If you want your husband to love your mother and call him call him ma, mm -hmm. why can you not love his mother and call his yeah. mother ma? Not I think concerning this, um, the guy himself has to put his foot down. First and foremost, this is your wife. This is someone that you say you love. You know, I don't think um, she's, even if she has her own whatever shortcomings and whatnot, First and foremost, everybody is against her because she's like the only outsider. So it's left to the husband to defend her, to be there for her. And, and again, she's literally doing everything. You know, just, it even shows like some sort of appreciation, showing that, okay, you know what, you're doing everything. Let me take this off you. Let my parents, whatever it is that they want to attack you, let them come to me. Let me handle it. But not leaving you to now be the one that, not leaving you to now be the one that everybody, everybody's attacking you and then, he seems like he's not on your side. So she literally feels like she's alone, even with him, you know. So he has to pull his weight, to be honest, you know. Um, a sister-in-law who has taken my money to cook for my wedding and is refusing to serve my family who have traveled all the way any food and then wanting to get into a physical fight with me, going to change her clothes and wear shorts to get into a fight with me. I, I mean, I personally would have been so shocked that I would have gone back home with my parents that very day. I don't think I would have stayed in that house and I don't think I would have gone back to that house. So I think her still staying despite that and um, well different, I wouldn't have the tolerance for that personally. So that was just totally out of order and I wouldn't have tolerated it. I will not marry Amanda or come and disrespect any of my siblings or yeah. my mother. Yeah. Exactly. So you why don't need you to love them like the way you love, love me. Yeah. But me you need to be you respectful. Can fight whatsoever, but you cannot come to my home. Yes. The woman mm -hmm. that gave birth to me. Mm -hmm. and disrespect oh, them. Me and my sister, we fight. Siblings fight, whether you like it or not. Thank you. But so my husband. Mm -hmm. Oh no. So, so are you so saying that she has to swallow it because she's under that woman's roof? Is that what you guys are saying? Because no, no, no. You're saying she can't do I understand what you're saying by everybody has to respect everybody's family. Yeah. yeah. Now I think that there is a boundary line that has to be drawn. Yeah. When this is people the woman that come still out husband. of character. No, we're not even going to love. We're just talking about In basic general, respect Africa, and basic boundaries. We meant to take too I am much. separating tradition from what yeah. should be if we're going according to the, the word of God, right. right? And we're going according to the Bible. It says, for this reason, a man shall leave, leave his it, mother and cleave to and his cleave. wife. So my understanding of the immediate family and the responsibility that a man has to his family is first, whether your mother is aging you know, she's ailing you know, your first that. responsibility is your wife, wife and your children. First. Now, but if you're you a good guy, you, oh, you, oh, so as a woman, you marry you're me. I'm not, I'm not saying that, that you should, I'm not saying you should disregard no, your family. Your wife is first I'm just saying that children. when it comes to defending your wife and then when it comes to it taking care one. of your home, that should be your priority. Yes. Now, so if the, the wife is a, if the wife, I'm not endorsing that a woman should be rude or whatever, but I think that we, I think this culture and culture of deference and she's older than you and this man and this mother is ruining a lot of things. It's killing, it's killing marriages. It's killing us. Because in the entire story that this woman has narrated, it has nothing to do with the man but the fact that he was lazy, which you've always known. Yeah. So to be honest with you, Don't should you leave him. him based on him? No. Because your complaints are if you remove yourself from this mother's house, a lot of your complaints will be solved. Are solved. Just removing <laughs> yourself from that house alone. Exactly. So she should have removed herself. That's now. what I'm yeah, saying. So, so Anaya, I don't. Once you have removed this, yourself, this. you need to suck it up because <laughs> yeah. you cannot be in somebody's house and tell them that this is how you should. It's either the mm. way or the highway. Mm. She can mm. suck it up now, and she's asking for advice whether to divorce so, or still be with him. Mm. My little advice to this lady: mm -hmm. I don't think 
women of today, mm -hmm. women, see, sometimes they call me to a lot of this, and I choose not to share mm -hmm. because they don't want to hear the truth, truth from me. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I'm going to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. I think women of today, us, mm -hmm. we shouldn't be afraid to mm -hmm. be us yes. and speak up. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy. I've been complaining like for this. We yes. only live once. once. Get a little space. Mm -hmm. If the man... You know, you have a kid with a man. He might come back or mm -hmm. he might not come back. But so, you know what Africans say about that space thing? That don't leave your house. Once you leave space, uh, me, there's room for clean up woman. Me, I don't do that. Woman. Me, I don't clean do up that. woman to me, enter. I don't do that. No, no, no. Yeah, because no, but that there is not that the African woman. There, there is a you. problem right there. Because leaving with him mm -hmm. and his family, yeah. I've lived in all kinds of places. Mm -hmm. From the nicest house to the compound house to all of it. Mm -hmm. There is always problem in compound houses. Mm -hmm. You see, that's why I always say, Nipa hunfunim, but we get tired of each other. Mm -hmm. A little space, disappear a little bit. They go, go and be with your mother. Mm -hmm. Maybe you miss your... Where is her family at yeah. all of this? They're, they're not in the same town. Yeah. You know, not because I want that ring on my finger, squeeze my neck and I'm going to stay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know what I mean? So please, yeah. African women, mm -hmm. you know, I, we learn only... to live, choose yourself. Learn to choose and, and be happy. Yeah. My your kids don't want to see you in a miserable relationship. Mm -hmm. They watch, they observe, they know what's mm -hmm. going on. My children want to see me happy. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm miserable mm -hmm. doesn't mean I have to stay married. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us are all lazy, but mm -hmm. once you bring that child to this world, mm -hmm. you so cannot so sleep. Yeah. You yeah. need to get up and go get a job. Yeah. Yeah. This boy yeah. is so spoiled. He's about how many years old? Still staying at home, his parents. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be 60 years old, still yeah. staying home. I'll That's you what out. The, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yes. No, but on you your know? second thoughts, Cornelia, yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. I also would give this unconventional advice mm -hmm. that this one thing that my mom told me mm -hmm. that um, if you want to, if you know what somebody likes, you do what they like for them and mm -hmm. you treat them for, what they, for who, they who they are. And so for this instance, let's just say your mother in law is giving you a hard time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard, mm -hmm. but you learn to love the people that hate you. Mm. That, that, no, that's, no, no, that's, that's good that's, advice, yes. but that's, that's no, 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 one but of the toughest the, things no, to no, do. No, no, but she mm -hmm. needs to decide because she needs to know what she wants to do. You yes. want your marriage? Yeah. And would you do anything to keep your marriage? Mm -hmm. Or is she willing to walk out? It's yeah. two different so, yeah. advice. It's good she's to willing be to walk out. submissive. No, no, no. It's good to be it's submissive. It's not about being submissive. I, no, most of it, it is. Most of it, it is. But to what extent? That's the problem now. The problem I find is that a lot of marriages are breaking because women are also becoming... There's nothing wrong with being independent and still being happily married. Mm -hmm. You can yes. make your point without causing friction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I mean, if I if you have an issue with your mother-in-law, be nice Because to most of what you are saying is all about trying her. to please yes, the mother. Loves, I'm not married to the mother. It doesn't I'm matter. not married you to the mother. Sorry, you know guys, what can I mean? we just get one voice here? So you see, the all, you this, say, wait, let me all this conversation is pleading the mother, pleading mm -hmm. the sister. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, who is in that small room with you? Mm -hmm. You and your husband. Who mm -hmm. is in that small yeah. room with you? Yeah. Who are we trying to please? It's, it's you know a what? relationship it's between two, two people. Mm -hmm. It's true. I, you know, you can love your extended family, all of it. But who are you discussing the problem with? Mm -hmm. Who are you laying on that bed with? So this you is know? the case where the person you're laying in that bed with who choose that mother over you. So what is what's the whole point? The thing, the thing is, the situation if you notice your husband is... loves his mother, mm -hmm. and you know you love your husband and you want to keep your marriage, mm -hmm. love, love his mother. It's simple. It's hard, but it's simple. No, no, and it yeah. makes life easier. Yeah, she doesn't like them. Or yeah, she, they are torturing the girl in the they house. Are her. They are torturing her. They are torturing her. Like Do you know her behavior see? in the house? Mm -hmm. well, Nobody can be outright rude and just be mean to you. And we don't. We also yourself. don't know the side of the man. I don't exactly. know. I think we have it's, some very kind. If you love your husband, mm. please love his mother. Be patient. Show her love. Give her a gift. No, no, yeah. For 10 I think years. I think, I, think let's, I, I, I don't think I don't think I don't think it's the black and white. I think there are many gray areas with yeah. this guys because Which I don't think that people time. are that black and white and nice. I think that there are a lot of cantankerous, they're diabolical mother-in-laws mm. at the point Very where diabolical. you are praying loudly when you know somebody is in your house and you're praying for God for to, to take dead. this woman away from you, dead or alive. Oh, that that is borderline diabolical for me. When you start to call some spiritual things and you're, I mean, you're, so you I mean, your prayers are nice. Well, 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 no, 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 I can't even be in that space. So my, my, my <laughs> general answer to this is, girl, you better leave. Yeah. You better run space. before it's too late. If you don't want to get a divorce, yeah. space. space. Yes. Go for Just three months. She go needs for, to be in her own space. Love your mother-in-law. Be nice to her. Pray over her. Love at the daytime, in the night. How many... Please, How many no. prayers are we going yeah. to Please. speak about? Please, I, I, I already I have remember, enough prayers for myself. I remember when I was growing up, you know, most homes, you see there's a couple, a little bit of fight, and you see your aunt will come home for a little bit, mm -hmm. clear her head, mm -hmm. they sit, 
they talk or they, you know. And then it works. And it works. Mm. But mm. being there, oh, come on, the we only you, go how away. much can you take? Let's be yeah. real here. Yeah. And forget about this We're fake, human. We're whatever human. thing yeah. that they leave, you know, mm-hmm. what are we talking about? Let's yeah. be real for once in our lives. You mm. know what I mean? Me, my happiness is everything. Mm. If I'm not happy, I'll ask for my space. Space, let's say, get some counseling, the whole nine yard. Yeah. If it work, it work. If it, it doesn't, doesn't work, moving. It's, we don't necessarily have to be together to raise our children. Some of us are actually better off oh. being separated yes. and raising our children, children. together. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You now, see, when it my... comes to the child, would you advise that she leave? You want to say something, so let me ask yes, that. Yes, my yeah. advice on mm-hmm. this, if she still loves the man, mm-hmm. she should move out of the house. Yes. Because basically the problem mm-hmm. right now is the sister the family. and mm-hmm. the mother. Yeah. The sister that doesn't even live in the house. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And for, her, for the, the mother house, yeah. to even make that prayer, mm-hmm. it says a lot about her. Yeah. She can even poison her. Mm-hmm. Because someone who will pray that God take care dead or alive. Mm-hmm. That's like too, too much. Too yeah. to the extreme. Mm-hmm. It's, it's bad. So for me, I think she should just move out of the house. Mm-hmm. And if she, if she feels she still wants her husband, she, mm-hmm. they can they need to move out. Yeah. They move out. They yeah. live together and try yeah. to start their own family on their own oh, yes. without them. Well, I don't they know. Will come and say, the I love start you from <laughs> far. <laughs> yeah. You can love them from far. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think, no. to be honest, God bless the mother-in-laws that are great because there are some amazing mother-in-laws yes. Yes, out my there. Mother-in-law so this is, is not so sweet. sweet. Like, is so yeah, sweet. this is not to stereotype, you know. But Nanaya, I think you're really sleeping on because you said she's praying to God, so how can she, um, <laughs> how can she poison her? No. It's a lot of sinners that pray to God out here, yeah. you know. Right. So mm-hmm. I don't think we should belittle how wicked some people can be. Mm-hmm. Some people just don't like. Friend. Some yeah, people just don't like the fact that they have married their child. child. Listen, you're, you're, the, the thing is, does she want her marriage or not? Mm-hmm. The advice or decision is based on whether she wants to keep her marriage or not. Mm-hmm. Well, with the story, she, she said she she's, still wants the marriage. She, but I, she's don't know, I think she's asking a question. I think she's So stuck. she's the breadwinner. She, she can afford Chimbe and Hope. Uh-huh. She can afford Uba. single Uba. rooms. A single she should go and rent and take her husband away and her child. Period. And, and, and I, think, and I think that we need to speak more about leaving because yeah. we stay bound we for so many reasons. We exactly. If there is not kill the woman. No, being nice to her is not going to help you be happy. The reason why she showed that is that she's scared to be lonely. She doesn't want to live without the problem her husband. Is a lot of us are afraid to be alone. Exactly, mm-hmm. that's, that's the main is. problem. Mm-hmm. A lot Starting of women. Starting again is hard. African yeah, women, my mm-hmm. sisters. Oh, mm-hmm. you have to, in the, you know, have, but can we speak to that process of being alone? A lot of us are so afraid to be alone. Let's talk about being alone. It is. 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 Or starting over. It is hard. There's so many women that are so miserable. They don't like it, but they are so in there. Yeah. Mm. You see, and, and, and it, it have a lot to do with our culture. That's you. It have a lot to do with that. I always say to my family, I thank you for taking me for the person that I am. Mm. You know what I mean? Because they never push me into doing anything that I don't want to do. Mm. At the end of the day, it's it about my happiness. Like. I go to my mom, my dad. I tell them, Daddy, I'm not happy. Da, 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 da. Okay, whatever mm-hmm. you choose to do, yeah. you have our blessings. Yes, so I feel like African women... If if uh, if something is going on, let's talk about it. When we find a solution to the problem, mm-hmm. yes. If we can, let's you go know, our separate ways. Let's go our separate ways. Yeah. Life is too short. Yeah. That's all we have time for today. <laughs> <laughs> As you've heard, <laughs> choose yourself. Don't be yes, afraid to choose yourself when it comes to relationship. Always read the red signs, the red flags. They're always there. I'll see you guys next time on Chick Chat Live. If you'd like to follow us on our social media handles, all the information will be on the screen below. Bye for now.